Third running back is Fontenot. They give it to him. It's the flea flicker. Set the throw. Montez down. Peel. Katie Nixon. He makes the grab with the 45. Gets away from the defender. KD at the 15 to 10 to 5. Touchdown. Touchdown, Colorado. 96 yards. Ah, oh, what a play. That was the 96-yard flea flicker from Steven Montez to Katie Nixon in a victory over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi, everybody. Voice of the Buzz, Mark Johnson. Welcome into the Buffalo Stampede. It's the holiday season. We're looking back at some of the great moments of 2019. Although that was the Nebraska highlight, which was the second game of the season. The Buffaloes did open up the Mel Tucker era down in Denver, Mile High Stadium, with a victory over CSU. <laughs> We're down here in Denver at Mile High Stadium, the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Uh, it's a big game for both CU, CSU. Kicks the season off with the rivalry. Uh, fans always show out. There's a lot of energy, a lot of fun and excitement around the game. This game is huge. It brings, I think, the state and both the schools together. Some competitive fun. Final showdown down here in Denver is also a big deal. I'm really proud to be part of the Ralphie Handler program. Being part of this game and the CU football culture is awesome. Obviously leading the team out with Ralphie for the game is one of the greatest traditions in all of college sports. And to be a part of that is really special. It's sad to see this being the last showdown here in Denver. The energy is always great at a neutral site. Fans coming down from Fort Collins as well as Boulder. So that energy is going to be great and awesome to be down here one last time. It's, you know, the beginning of the end, it's been a great journey with the team. I'm excited for this last season. we got a bunch of great new kids coming in. They're going to be really talented and the program is going to be strong for years to come. So the Buffaloes open up the Mel Tucker era with the victory over Colorado State. And by the way, as great a victory as that was, that was the final game in the series for the Buffaloes and the Rams down at Denver. We caught up with some fans to get their reaction about that final contest in the Mile High City. Obviously, this is uh, another game between our uh, beloved rivals, CSU. Uh, been coming to this, like I said, since 1989. Uh, it's a great venue and a great place to hold it. Our family has had season tickets for over 50 years um, and we've expanded the number of seats and it's been a great way to extend the whole experience and make the, the whole experience not just around the football game but around the, all the fun before and after the game as well. One of the reasons we do it is to get the boys involved, to get them outside. We have a lot of friends. We tailgate uh, every Saturday, every Friday night, whatever, at the Folsom Field. We've been doing that for several years. We probably have 50, 60, sometimes 70, you guys think? come and show up at our tailgate. So this is supposedly the last showdown here at uh, Bronco Stadium. I'm kind of disappointed about it. Even though we get to play them at home now, I'd rather still they host the venue here because I think it's a, a better atmosphere for the fans and the, and the teams. I'm happy that this is the last time that we're here at Mile Stadium. I think it's better on the, uh, on the, on the campuses, on CU and CSU. It's, it's been awesome in Denver because Denver's the Mile High City. It's neutral ground. But it's gonna be cool to like go to everybody's home turf. Sco bus! Sco bus! Sco bus! So after that victory over the Rams, the Buffs went on to beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers, of course, for the second year in a row as they did so at uh, Folsom Field. We caught up with a couple of great buffs. Matt McChesney and Sean Tufts got their reaction and their perspective from the sidelines to the victory over Nebraska. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. Um, last year in Lincoln was phenomenal. Obviously getting the W, but sold out to the brim. Even though there's a lot of red, I don't care. They can travel great. The more they come to witness it, the better. All these red shirts came here and they're all going home. And that's fine because they're going home no matter what, but they're going home with a loss. It's incredible. I mean, this is why a lot of these guys came to the University of Colorado to play in this game and win. That's why I came here. This group knows how to do it. My biggest memory in Nebraska is coming off the field, being up 28 points, and saying, is this real? To Commit to him on the bench and having to calm down, refocus, and go finish the game. Because we always start hot against this team. Finishing is important. So two fantastic victories, one over Colorado State, one over Nebraska to begin the Mel Tucker era. As we continue here in the Stampede, we'll continue looking back on great moments of 2019. and your Colorado Buffaloes. Well, there's no better way to start a college football game than hearing that call. Here comes Ralphie. And, of course, this is the final year for Ralphie 5 was 2019. Early in the season, the Air Force Falcons were in town. Then the Falconers came, bringing their group of Falcons, and we had two live mascots at Folsom Field. Toss 
awesome having another live mascot at the game. I grew up going to the Air Force games, and so I've seen the Falcon fly tons of times. Yeah, having the Falcon in the stadium is awesome. Two live mascots in the same stadium is really cool, and it's great for the fans to see. But let all the people come up and see her and take pictures, and it's a great time. So I'm in ROTC here at CU Boulder at Debt 105. And I also have a brother that went to the Air Force Academy, so it's awesome that we can watch these teams play together in the same stadium. And being in ROTC, it's really cool seeing the Air Force come out here. Most of the teams that we play don't bring our mascot. And since it's in state, we get to all go, so it's a pretty cool experience for the team to get to come. We haven't played CU since 1974. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I've never been that close to a Buffalo before. It's so definitely a unique experience for everybody who does Falcons. This is the coolest thing I do at school. I go down every day and I get to play with birds, which isn't something people can say. It's definitely the best part of my day every day. From the Air Force Falcons to the Falcons that the Academy brought to Folsom Field, back to Ralphie. You know, she's taken care of unlike any other mascot in the country. In fact, we had a great donor here at the University of Colorado that early this year donated the proceeds that went to a brand new trailer for Ralphie. Behind me is Ralphie's new trailer. It's her new home when she comes here to Folsom Field. It was time for us to get a new trailer. Uh, her old trailer we've had for just under 10 years and we only get the best for Ralphie and make sure everything she has is top notch. A huge, huge thank you to the Hoover family who made a generous donation to the Ralphie program so we were able to purchase this trailer. This trailer we started from scratch with what we needed for Ralphie to make sure she was safe and comfortable at all times. We started with a beefed up suspension system, bigger axles, stronger axles, and a big suspension system that's actually air ride. So when we're driving down the road, the whole trailer will lift up, giving Ralphie a very smooth ride, a comfortable ride, and a pleasurable ride as she's driving down the road. From there, we increased the comfort level of her with the cushioning on the floor of the trailer. This is a special rubber cushioning that's in there that allows liquids to drain out while still maintaining a rigid, solid, and comfortable place for her to stand on. This trailer is just bigger, faster, stronger, just like Ralphie. We made the whole trailer bigger. It's longer, it's wider in her area, so that gives her more room to stand up, to lie down, to walk around, to do whatever she wants to do while she's in the trailer. The trailer also has some additional square footage for the Ralphie handlers in the front of the trailer so they can work a little bit more easier as they're getting Ralphie ready for her game day run. The trailer is also a little bit taller, We've increased the ventilation as well as the insulation of the trailer too, which will allow us to regulate the temperature inside the trailer based on the outside temperatures. Ralphie's obviously the greatest live mascot in all of college sports, so we had to make sure she had the greatest trailer possible. Again, huge shout out to the Hoover family who made this possible for us. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them. Big thank you. And as always, go Buffs. Well, Ralphie's got a great home, of course, and as she went through the season, we found out that this was going to be her last year running for Colorado football. Ralphie Five's tenure was coming to an end, and in the final home game of 2019 against the Washington Huskies, which turned out to be a victory, the team celebrated Ralphie with a special helmet. Earlier in the week, as everybody knows, Ralphie retired, and coach and the players and everybody with the program just kind of want to do something special, celebrate her and, and what she's done for the program. And thought we'd do the Roman numeral. Might be a good idea, put on the helmet, so we took one of the Ralphies off and put that five up there for her. It's just something to celebrate what she's done for the program, her impact, and what she kind of contributes on game day. This right here, this is the real deal, man. Ralphie Five, thank you for everything you've done. I've been watching Ralphies since I was little, so. This is this is this is dope to actually have on the helmet and everything. At first, I was surprised. I was like, "What is this?" And then, like Ralphie Five. I mean, we're honoring Ralphie, so I think it's a good thing that we do that. And we like she's been there for like 12 years running for us, so I think it's a great thing for us to do that. I really like this helmet. Like the five really surprised me, and everything just having a Ralphie on the side. Like this game is just really for her. This is the last time her probably just being around and everything. Just it's time to get it. Get this W. I think it's awesome. I'm pumped. Just, uh, I've always been around the Ralphie tradition since I was a kid, so it's good to have a little tribute to her with the Ralphie 5 sign on the helmet. It's, uh, it's important to the team, it's important to the whole university. She's an icon for everybody, so we want to pay our respects to her. So a bittersweet ending the season as we say goodbye to Ralphie 5, and of course we'll look forward to Ralphie 6 in 2020. As we take a time out here in the Stampede, we'll continue looking back on some of the great moments of 2019 here at the University of Colorado. Standoff, whistle. Off the crossbar. Hit the crossbar. And the Buffaloes move to 4-0 on the season.
Well, a great save by J.J. Tompkins, who will go down as one of the great Buffs goaltenders of all time in soccer. That was against the University of Texas. Back at a stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. What a great season it was for the University of Colorado soccer team. And to get ready for that campaign, they took a trip before the season overseas. France was incredible. It was honestly a once-in-a-lifetime trip, and it was just a very memorable one. Being there in the environment of the World Cup was just unreal. Being at the games, attending the USA-Thailand game, it was really fun, a lot of goals scored, and the Australia-Brazil game was hands down one of the best live games I've ever seen. Being able to play some games out there was definitely a lot of fun. It was very different, um, but just being in their environment and just seeing their culture and just being embraced in the whole soccer environment was just fun. So I'm glad that we were able to get three games in and just play and have some fun. So it was, it was, good. It was a good time. You hear France and immediately you think about the Eiffel Tower. So finally, being able to see it in person was beautiful, especially at night when all the lights were twinkling. And even um, the Louvre was incredible as well. All the artwork that we saw and, and uh, Mona Lisa. Um, it was pretty cool just being there in person and being so close to the artwork was really cool. Um, Versailles was incredible. Um, the tour was just unreal. Of course, we only did some of the palace just because it, we would be there forever if we did the whole thing. But overall, it was a great experience and it was so much fun. Well, that trip overseas certainly set the buffs up for a great season. They went to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Late in the season, we celebrated a wonderful senior class for Danny Sanchez's team. We had a soccer game today in the blizzard, no. Um, we had senior day today earlier. We celebrated, which was awesome. It was really fun um, just to walk out with everybody. Um, as you can see, the weather is pretty rough. I think in my four years, I've never played in snow like this. So um, we came out strong. I mean, it was senior day. We all were really pumped up for this game. Well, I'm too cold to cry, but I have a lot of emotions right now. Um, front of field has been amazing to me. This program has been amazing to me. So to play my last regular season match here is just um, overwhelming and I'm just so blessed to be part of this program. Um, I'm going to miss a lot of things, uh, especially my teammates, the coaching staff, how they push me every day, and just having a great, great team atmosphere and the fans were awesome. They stayed in the pouring cold, so I'm going to miss everybody so much. Um, getting a goal on my senior day meant so much to me. Um, and, I mean, on the run of play, I just got a pass from, I think it was Kelsey, and I just took a touch, and they left me the whole left side of the goal, so I'm going to take what, I, what they gave me. So, yeah, it really meant a lot to me to score on my senior day. My family's been through it all with me. Uh, my grandma, dad, whole mom's side of the family came out to support me today, and it really meant a lot for them to sit in 27-degree weather for me, so. Go Buffs. Just go Buffs. <laughs> From soccer to volleyball, the Buffaloes this year had a little royalty on their roster. But you didn't know that. In fact, one of the Buffaloes was named Miss Colorado. Okay, so here joining us, we have Emily Demure, who has recently been crowned Miss Colorado USA. Emily, how does it feel? Wow, you know, I love when people ask me that question. It feels great. It's an incredible honor to be here and to be crowned and to represent Colorado. How did you first get into doing pageants? How long have you been doing that for? My mom actually competed in pageants when she was younger for scholarship money for college. A lot of people don't know there's a lot of incredible opportunities for a scholarship through pageantry. So that's actually why I started. When you went to Miss Colorado USA, what did that um, preparation look like in getting ready for the pageant? As you both know, I'm very <laughs> fortunate to have this volleyball program to make sure I'm physically in shape. We have an incredible weight training staff and volleyball practice just about every day. Um, but there's a lot of mental preparation that goes into it as well. Um, one of the things that I did that was incredibly helpful was before bed every night, I would FaceTime my Grammy and she would just ask me interview questions so that way I could oh be prepared God. for any questions that come <laughs> thrown at me. So now that you are Miss Colorado USA, um, what's next for you? What does your future look like? Well, I'm sure most of you know that I will be headed to the nationally televised Miss USA competition this summer. But I'm also going to be working with a lot of local charities, nonprofits, youth organizations um, around the state of Colorado, um, supporting some of the other state title holders as well. As your teammates, we are so proud of you and so happy for you, and we can't wait to see where this journey takes you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, that'll take you through soccer and volleyball here at the University of Colorado during this year-end show as we look back on some of the great stories of 2019. More still to come.
Back into Stampede, and there was a great year for Joe Klecker, one of the seniors for the CU Cross Country team, ended up number two in the nation in the national championships. He's also a member of one of the great organizations, student-led organizations here at the University of Colorado, that focuses on mental health, that being the Boulder Buffs. So this is the Boulder Buffs. So we're in our second year of the program. Last year was super successful. Uh, we did a bunch of awareness, and I think the biggest thing that we learned from year one was that everybody cares about this topic, and it's really important, and we really want to destigmatize it even more and get more people involved in it as much as possible. I knew it was important for us. I had no idea how important it was for a community in Boulder. It's super important that it's student-led because I think the issues, we understand the issues that we're facing every day and that our teammates are facing, so to have the students run it and kind of dictate what we're talking about and what the voice is and the message is is super important. So just we're all on the same page and we understand. It's one thing if coach wants to help you, which is awesome, but at the end of the day, if your teammates struggling, you know what they're going through every single day, you can help them as well because you've, you've been there and you've been through it. I think this athletic department has been just incredible. They're, honestly, it's been support nonstop, actually. I mean, everybody's asking, what can we do? How can I get involved? The support from everybody, from Athletic director, coaches, every single resource has been incredible and I'm just so excited to see what's next. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're just here to help fellow student athletes. Uh, if they're struggling and they're going through anything, we want to be there for them every step of the way. Well, a great organization here at the University of Colorado, led by the students of Boulder Buffs. You know, another great partnership we've got here at CU. This year we found out about a new product from Ball Aerospace. You saw them at all the games. Brand new aluminum cups for all the beverages at our sporting events. CU Boulder is the home of recycling in American colleges. This is the first college in the United States that had a recycling program. It started way back in the 70s when the Environmental Center was born on Earth Day of 1970. With the leadership that we've had from athletics, we've been able to move the ball on recycling and zero waste. The first zero waste sports program uh, in the United States 10 years ago started here at Ralphie's Green Stampede. So this is the next step, it's moving towards reusables and away from plastics and compostables. Forward-thinking companies like Ball are a natural for us. Infinitely recyclable aluminum has a bigger impact around the world right now than we've ever seen. 75% of all aluminum ever produced is still in use today. As we take advantage of that, we really had to get creative. You know, new equipment, new processes, and it's great to see somebody like CU being ahead of the game and wanting to proactively help push this forward. You know, we really look forward to, to launching this guy right here. It really has been the perfect venue and perfect partnership to launch this. Their product is innovative and simple. We're proud to be the first campus in the United States to roll it out and test it and prototype it and make it better. When you look at the influence that sports have over their fans, and they will look at this evolution as the next step in sustainability and carry that into their own personal life. Not only were they great looking cups, they were also very eco-friendly, recyclable cups that you had a chance to fill up with whatever cold beverage you were looking for in a ball game. Maybe, in fact, it was Avery Beer. Speaking of great partnerships here at the University of Colorado, that great local brewery put out a wonderful product this year called Stampede. Really cool project with Stampede. About three and a half years ago, I reached out wanting to potentially do some kind of project with the university. Our idea behind it was to make a beer that would be just a great game day beer. So the nice light golden lager, Colorado lager we call it. A lot of names are on the table as well, but it's just perfect, right? Stampede, we're, we're affiliated with the Stampede. Here comes Ralphie, you know, run Ralphie, run. When you think about Boulder, you think about the University of Colorado. But also, Avery been around for 26 years, one of the original craft breweries in the state of Colorado. It was really cool for us to have that identity. We thought Avery was the natural partner for us, an iconic brand in the Boulder area. We, we couldn't be more thrilled with how, the, how it turned out, from the name to the style to the just the taste. We're thrilled we were able to get this out in time for the football season, especially this first home game against Nebraska. People are thrilled with it. They can't get enough of it. I think when you see that, it, it screams Colorado and, and Colorado athletics and it's great. Well, that's a great look back at 12 different stories that impacted the University of Colorado Athletic Department during late 2019. That'll wrap up this week's show. I'm Boyce of the Boss, Mark Johnson. Have yourself a happy holiday and a safe new year.